This film is a very short story of an epic event which was pivotal in the Gallipoli campaign. This is the legend of the Australian submarine AE-2. Australia, a fledgling country, was drawn into World War I from a population of fewer than 5 million. 416,000 men enlisted, more than 60,000 were killed and 156,000 wounded. Unknown to many, Australia had two E-class British submarines, AE-1 and AE-2. The primitive E-class was the backbone of the British Navy's submarine fleet. But it would be Lieutenant Commander Henry Stoker in command of AE-2 that would make submariner history. The craft was built by Vickers Armstrong in England and was commissioned in 1914. In February 1915, AE-2 joined a Royal Navy squadron based on the island of Tenedos in the Aegean Sea. It was imperative that a submarine enter the Dardanelles and create havoc to focus enemy attention away from the real Gallipoli landing. All previous attempts by Allied vessels to pass through the strait had failed. Stoker and his crew were about to change that and go where three previous attempts had failed. Stoker presented plans to attempt a passage through the 35 mile long heavily fortified Dardanelles Strait and enter the Sea of Marmara. His plan could be seen as a suicide mission. Minefields, fixed and mobile gun batteries, searchlights and patrolling Turkish warships, coupled with natural navigational hazards, made the Dardanelles seemingly impassable. However, if he succeeded, enemy shipping transiting between the Bosphorus and the Dardanelles could be prevented from reinforcing and resupplying the Turkish troops on the Gallipoli Peninsula. This in turn would greatly improve the success of the Gallipoli landing. Many lives were depending on Stoker, his crew and AE-2. His plan went into action at about 2.30 a.m. on 25th of April. By 4.30 a.m. the trouble began. AE-2 was sight of the searchlights and gun batteries opened fire on AE-2. AE-2 immediately dived, beginning an underwater passage through the minefields. Mooring wires tethering the mines continually scraped along AE-2's sides for the next half hour. After leaving the minefield, Stoker was at periscope depth and again was fired upon. Stoker, watching through his periscope, observed a number of ships and quickly determined to attack what he thought to be a small cruiser. He fired a torpedo but had to dive quickly as a Turkish torpedo boat was at the same time bearing down on him and had passed close overhead. Stoker's torpedo struck home. At 10 a.m. on the 30th of April, Stoker then sighted a torpedo boat approaching at high speed. AE-2 dived to avoid the torpedo boat. However, at about 10.30, unexpectedly, the AE-2 rose and broke the surface about one mile from the torpedo boat. The crew battled to stabilize the AE-2, but the torpedo boat and smaller gunboats started firing. AE-2 was taking hits. At this point, Lieutenant Commander Stoker ordered abandoned ship and scuttled AE-2. Incredibly, there were no casualties following this heroic mission. However, the crew of 34 spent the next three and a half years as POWs in Turkish prisons. In June 1998, Mr. Selkuk Kurle, director of the Rami Kok Museum in Istanbul, discovered AE-2's wreck lying in 72 meters of water. The wreck was first dived in July, while subsequent dives by an Australian team in October 1998 confirmed the wreck as being AE-2. On the 9th of September 2007, Australian and Turkish naval authorities began an undersea investigation to determine if AE-2 could be raised and restored. But a survey team established the wreck of AE-2 had suffered further damage since the 1998 inspection dives, and a recommendation was made against raising the wreck. Discussions concerning the long-term preservation of AE-2 continued between Australia and Turkey. 